In this video, I'm gonna show you five of the best piano VSTs. And if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna show you two piano VSTs that have been on my radar and tell you why I haven't purchased them yet. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of sound design with building a stable live keyboard rig and with using Ableton. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. So here are some things to consider when you're checking out which type of piano VST you want to purchase. You might want to be asking yourself, am I looking for an upright piano sound or a grand piano sound? And you probably should also ask yourself what pianos you already have. The true best piano VST is the one that you mold and shape to fit in your current situation. So each and every piano VST I'm going to show you today I have used before, but in most cases I do have to EQ or compress or add some effects to make them work for me in a live context. They don't always just work right out of the box, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad. So I want to encourage you, if you have a piano, work on making it work for you. And then as you add these on, you'll be even more equipped and skilled to do the work on these instruments that really make them shine. So uh, we're going to start with the Gentleman, which is uh, native instruments. These are all native instruments that I'm about to show you. And the Gentleman is an upright piano. It sounds like an upright piano. And honestly, even it feels to the touch the way the sound responds like an upright piano. It feels a little bit old, you know? Um, but it, it's okay. Now, if I was going to use this live, um, I probably would want to play with this a little bit. Out of the box, it's not great for me. When I turn this tone up, though, that that works for me. That's inspiring. So even just moving a little bit of a knob is good. I also love the space plug-in on these instruments. As I add a little bit, It just starts to open the sound up and uh, and it really transforms the instrument. I probably would also EQ this just a little bit um, to pull out some of the extra frequencies in the mids, but this piano is only $99. Um, they have some pay later options, which is nice. Um, and so if you're looking for an upright, this could be a good option. This is the Grandeur, and this one is my go-to piano for everything, and I'll tell you why. It's even, right? If you listen, it's got a really clean characteristic all the way across the keys. Um, it feels beautiful to respond to, and it's not trying to be anything that it's not. This just sounds like a really well-sampled grand piano. And if you're playing in a worship context or in a rock and roll context, Starting with a piano that is this clean is nice, especially if you're going to end up really heavily compressing it and affecting it, because you're going to have to do less work EQing out some of the impurities that are going to happen when you process it that way. Um, so that's the Grandeur, and this is my go-to. I use this for just about everything. This also is $99.00 definitely worth it. So I would say this is one of the best VSTs, and if I was going to recommend that you buy just one, this would be my recommendation for the Grand Piano. Um, all right, here's the Maverick. The Maverick is also a Grand, but it's uh, an older Grand. This was sampled uh, in the early 1900s. I bet it's 1908. I'll have to write that in text because I don't want to misspeak, but here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So it's a little bit muffled, right? But again, as we turn the tone up, that's got a lot of character. Um, also going the other way is nice. Uh, 
has a cool sound. So this is a really good uh, piano VST. Um, I would recommend this. However, if I had to choose between the Maverick and the Grandeur, I would always choose the Grandeur because it feels more versatile. I could do some things to the Grandeur to make it sound a little more tinny or a little bit more muted, but I think it would be harder to go the other way from the Maverick. So just in terms of like a multi-functioning standpoint, um, I would still go with the grandeur over the Maverick. All right, so this is Alicia's Keys. It's got a good sound. No matter how much I try, I never really get Alicia's Keys to work well for me. Um, it just always lacks a little bit something. It never shines quite as much as I want it to. There are some people who swear by this piano. For me, it, it's just not the best. I think if you're going to go for a grand, definitely go for the grandeur. Um, and we would be remiss to leave out the giant. Um, and it is what it sounds like. This is a giant upright piano. And I feel like this one in particular really stands out. Um, when you begin to alter some of these presets. If you're playing like a good pop song, maybe has a bit of like a Broadway musical vibe to it. And of course, the giant can be manipulated uh, to be really anything. It, it can be super ambient. For a while, it went through a phase where people were using it a lot for worship music. Um, and that is uh, another great use case for it. So overall, my top two recommendations would be the Grandeur and the Giant because I think they are the most versatile. But you've made it to the part of the video where I'm going to share with you two outliers that I have not purchased yet that I think might be worth considering and why I personally haven't bought them. So the first is Keyscape. Now, Keyscape is about $350, um, and it's got a, a ton of really uh, famous people <laughs> demoing their sound. So here's, uh, here's one by Corey Henry. The piano sound sounds great. And it sounds natural and it sounds real. The reason that I think it maybe is not necessary for me and perhaps wouldn't be necessary for you is I don't know that I'm ever really playing where I'm trying to make my piano sound like a great actual real piano. I'm trying to make my piano sound like a rock and roll instrument that fits in with guitars and drums and a whole bunch of other sounds. So having a clean starting point is fine, but with what I already have, I can do quite a bit. And the other one that's been on my radar is the Noir. And this is slightly higher than the others, comes in at $150. But I've heard that this is a pretty warm um, sounding instrument. And there are some demos on here as well. But here's the deal, friends. If you learn how to use what you have, you will always have what you need. Now, if you're trying to choose Piano VST, Grandeur and the Giant are great places to start. If you already have several, I want to encourage you to watch the video in the sidebar right now where I talk about how you can make Ableton stock piano sound good. And if you follow along with that, you can do the same thing on the pianos that you already have. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time on LiveKeyboardist.com.